Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So this is our 12th episode, broadcast, edition, whatever you want to call it. Um, so if you've never been here before, thanks for joining us. And uh, all the usual people, thanks for coming back. This is great. It's all about our community. We like to uh, speak to people in the chat room. So if you're watching this live, you're here now, do contribute. It's all about you guys, what's going on. So, yeah, tonight's show... We have, uh, we're going to look a little bit, um, I've got a new guitar and I, and I can't contain my excitement. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll carry on a little bit more about, we talked about some of the guitar racks from last week. And, um, but we've also, our special guest is someone really interesting and uh, ticks loads of boxes for our perfect guest. Um, it's Ski Oakenfall and Ski's known for many things, but to me, he's known for about three things. Um, one is obviously is the guy who did the uh, deconstruction videos, which um, if you don't know what they are, you'll find out. But really, really helpful breaking down um, hits over the years, how they were made and how to reconstruct them yourself. So really good for producers and music makers. Um, but he was also the keyboard player in Galliano. Right? When I went to Glastonbury for the first time, he was playing one of my favorite bands at the time. Anyway, you'll find out all about what he's doing now and the music he's making, stuff like that. So. As usual, I am joined by none other than Tim from Lost Light. Hello. Is that actually your surname, from Lost Light? From Lost Light, yeah, yeah. No, it, middle, it, name, middle name from, last name, Lost Light. It's not a bad surname, though, is it? It's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all right. How are you, mate? You all right? I'm okay. Yes, I'm okay. I'm, I've actually had a, a week off. Yeah, you look week, like you've a, caught a, a little a little bit of sun it, in a healthy manner. It's not a, not, it's not a, like, you don't look red. No, but, it's a, but it's you, a filter. You, it's a filter. Oh, it's <laughs> no, I don't, no, I don't know, actually. It's not. I've got the lighting down here and things and whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. We shall see. But, yeah, I, I think it's it's a filter. But I have actually, yeah, I did I go for a long walk and burnt various parts of the body. It's part of your routine, that, isn't it, to, to, to keep yourself fresh and, and on point going for your walk? Yeah, I go mad otherwise because they're just in here or because it's, it's half term, you know. Those of you with kids, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of a... <laughs> And people say, oh, have you had a good week off? I ain't had a week off. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, a different week. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another week, yeah. We anyway, know. come on, get it out. Show, show me, because you, uh, you, you know you want to. Well, get, get what, what I said I'd do is I'd show this guitar. All right. I'll, 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 I, I thought you were just going to give us a little snapshot. Yeah, you, you've already introduced it. Yeah, but... this is my new guitar. It's a Gretsch. Tim's got a Gretsch as well, but his is a different colour. Because <laughs> we couldn't get the same colour in case no. we were on stage. To, well, well, when we're on stage together, or in any performance, you know, all the world, all the world's a stage, Tim. That's true. That's yeah, very true. Uh, so, okay, well, I'll do two things. We'll, uh, I'll show you the guitar rack I was talking about. So last week um, we had the amazing Annie plays guitar. Um, she's awesome. How good is she on guitar as well? Yeah. So yeah. not that I've been practicing every day since or anything, but uh, <laughs> I've, I've been having a. a week but it did make it did push me on to go and get this scratch that i've been after for a while so i'm gonna share the screen and get onto it so two things that i wanted to uh show tim and anyone that's remotely interested now if you use the guitar tuner and i said no oh, sorry i say if you use the tuner in live uh because just to show in comparison the tuner in live is awesome and um here it is tuner so if i just uh put oh i know it's not it's not that it's not i've moved it up here there it is so if i just plop the tuner in here now the tuner's great and obviously you don't need to use it for guitars you can use it for synths which is, i do I use it for synths and if you want to sort of get the key of a sample or a bass or something um, I know you've tried that, Tim, as well. And sometimes it's pretty um, tricky to get stuff, to get it to work. But even more so, if you're using... I've just got a blank clip here. If I double-click on the clip now and I'm playing the clip and I want to move the pitch of the clip, you can't see the tuner unless you press, you know, Shift and Tab will bring you back to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So... It's great, and you can have this like histogram view, so you can see. Because, because the... my theory size. Sorry to interject. Go on. Because you, you, you know, my theory is not very good. So it, it oh. takes me, it takes me a, a, a good like ten seconds to work out when I'm 
fiddling about with that where I've changed it to. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Well, that's another thing as well. And skis on. He um, looks at the harmony of the whole track. And oh man, honestly, I've got favourite ones. So I can't wait to talk to him. I'm going to drill mm. him about all that. The Roots <laughs> Maneuver one as well. That was amazing. And the Bjork one. <laughs> anyway, there's loads. <laughs> but yeah, so this tuner, I got this uh, off maxforlife.com. And I think um, it was like two dollars, so one pound something, and it was worth it because although it doesn't look as uh, cool as the other one, you you press this here and it, it it comes up there, it breaks away. So this is what I was uh, I was talking to. I can't remember who I was talking to um, about this. I was talking to somebody about this, whether it was Ned or uh, Mark Towers, but I'm sure it's not that hard to make one but anyway so it breaks away so if now if i go over to here and i'm look, working on the the wav or incoming audio oh, that's, that's it stays that up there great. so yeah. you probably think like that's what's the big deal but trust me if you're working <laughs> with sim sol it is it's a big deal to me it is so anyone that's you know guitarists or synth and you're trying to do something or trying to get the key of a sample whatever trust me it's what it works so the it's called oh what's what's going on here Oh, I think I, click, I clicked on the um, Max for Live. It's trying to open the patch, and no, nah, I don't want to do that. So, yeah, there you go. So this here is there. So I'll, I've, I've tuned up, I think, before. And this, I did put the link, Tim, in the chat in I've here. I've got it. Don't it. worry. It's, it's so going in. It's going in. Tim's going to post this in. Uh, now, this guy who made this is called, he's called Cloud Cord. Now, I forgot his name, and I put Cord Cloud. And you get something very different. This guy teaching like primary school songs. Don't do it. Uh, he's a, he's a, a fellow certified trainer. I've not met him yet, um, but really cool. And he's made um, this guitar template. Now he does a free one, which the video uh, takes you to, and it uses Live Eleven's amazing macros, macro variations. So I'll just zoom in so you can see. Now something else as well that one of our, our friends said. Um, that when you're watching this, um, just let us know in the chat if you're watching it live. Do you watch it on a mobile or do you watch it on a computer? Because one of my oh, friends yeah, said, yeah. oh, it's really small. You, you can't see what you're doing in them bits. And it's like, well, I watch it on a iPhone 12. I check it after no, no, 11 mine. And it's quite a big screen. But I watch it back and you can see stuff. But if I wanted to watch it and work out what someone was doing, I would watch it on a computer. So yeah. just let us know if you're if you're in the chat room. Just one sec. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so using the macro. So if I click this now, each one of these is a variation. So um, our amazing uh, cloud card certified trainer has just used all Ableton Live devices to make this rack. So all the devices are already in there. Every single one. That's my tuner from before to get rid of that. So he's put all these devices and making uh, chains and then what this does el enables you to have 16 macros and you can show and hide these as well which is really cool if you want to make like a one button thing you can just go like that it, it doesn't get rid of any macros that you've mapped all still sat there yeah and if this is all confusing and you're new to live um the macros is basically you can have one button a one dial or change a parameter that will change multiple all at once so all these things that you can see like the treble on the amp here if i wanted to make that i could right mouse click and i could map this to one of the macros which is called low cut i won't do it now but if you do that you can map multiple things in fact i think 128 things to one um one parameter one dial one macro so yeah it's pretty deep but this is all bit all the kind of hard work's been done for you and you just click these and it will change through the sound so if i before I even play anything this one's super clean so you can see where it's set the wires on nothing there's a little bit of reverb there's no tremolo there's no octave device if i click the next one muted wire obviously the wire goes up and stuff like that and you can make your own if i start twiddling around with these and then press new i can make a new preset so this is like a good way, and it uses all live devices. If you've got Suite, Live 11 Suite, everything is here. Um, there's That's no third-party cool. effects. So I'll just play it with, um, with the guitar so you can hear some of the sounds. And 
for me, it's like, well, if you've got guitar rig, which I have, or any UAD amps and things like that, which I have, which is, you know, um, fortunate for me. But if you've not, um, first of all, these don't use any, right, too much processor, uh, maybe a little bit. But um, it's really flexible and quick, and you can just flick between it and then, you know, see how it goes. But if you use these... Um, amps right and use the right gain staging you can get really good sounds and it's all about using the cabinet and saturator and things like that anyway so let's have a I look like, i like a saturator you do like a good saturator and i can't oh yeah here we go insert any excuse for simon to play a new guitar <laughs> i was gonna it's, it's, the timing couldn't have been better for you to well, be yeah, showing up it, showing it off only arrived this morning so <laughs> i should by the way before before you start yeah. playing that guitar um <laughs> Dave Dave Henkel says nice hat. He is also a hat wearer. Yes. He, he, Hi he Dave. Likes How are you? Hat. Yes. D D Dave is uh, now a regular viewer, and he went and watched all the other ones back in reverse order. He, he's a good man. He's a good man. He is a good man. He's a very arti artistic man as well. We talk to him about, and he's, he's doing a good project. And he said that we'd catch up and talk about it, so we must. Oh, anyway, that sounds cool. Yeah, he's yeah. doing some like cool visuals or some, something something very uh, smart. Anyway, so click that. Super clean. Oh, I, I keep playing with the, uh, the, the little trev. It doesn't. But yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> that's not part of the effect. So just clean. So you can hear a bit of reverb on there. So. It sounds nice. Now. The next one is muted wah, which uh, Tim discovered that if you actually. Now it's got. Um, it's the auto filter, and if you really kind of. I think it's like velocity sensitive, isn't it? The harder you play it, like. Yeah, so, so when, when, you, when you give it a bit of welly, you, you, get, you get more of a. Kind of wiry anyway. I mean, you can sort of adjust that. Um, the edge. What does that one mean, Tim? The edge. That's uh, Dickhead's best oh, mate. Oh yeah, it? your favourite band is that? <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. Let's let's not be too harsh on it. I, I I appreciate some of the things they've done. I also think that the some of the maybe misplaced, but but quite arrogant uh, knobheads. <laughs> Diplomatic. Tim is referring to the band known as U2. <laughs> Which I think are a, a no, no, but more specifically Bono. Oh, I, right. I don't want to tar. I don't want to tar all the band with, with Bono's brush. No. Anyway, I'm not getting involved in that conversation because I like you too. <laughs> Early stuff. Anyway. So yeah, it's got the delay, and you can adjust the timing of it and things like. That. Oh, you can see delay time there, delay amount and delay time. Um, but if you just go. Does what it says on the tin, that. Yeah. Jimmy SRV. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> what does that one mean? <laughs> yeah, something well, like that. Give, 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 give us, that's the one. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. Not, not too distorted, is it? It's just got a bit of. No, it's, it's, it's good that. What a lovely character. And for anyone that's just tuned in, this is this is a, a, a guitar rack that is completely made of uh, Ableton. Yeah, yeah. Ab <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what on earth is happening on my screen? <laughs> it says six. Oh, the 60s surf one. It's just got a tremolo thing. Do you like it's that? It's lovely, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm into that. I need to set up my microphone because I keep being lazy and deciding that I'll uh, use settings for, for tremolo because I need some for, yeah. for something I'm working on that I need to show you. I'm trying to create it when I've got flipping Fender Twin Reverb sat there. And you've got an even tied 
H, whatever it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, mate. And, and, it, and it's fully loaded with all the things in it. It is. Anyway, yeah, yeah. so you've got all these. You get the idea. <laughs> So that's this clean blues. We've got a lot of delay on it for me. That I don't know. I must have changed it. But yeah. So Eno. Can't think what that means. I don't know what happened. It's it's pretty <laughs> tricky trying to play the guitar and do that. But anyway, <laughs> so that's that one. This one, Blue Children, is some sort of like harmonizer with the, um, it's got the um, octaves on the grain delay. So, yeah. You get the idea. Oh, sorry, yeah. the ACDC. That was pretty you clear. Got, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyway, so that's uh, for some reason I think I'm I put reverb on them accidentally, but you get the idea anyway. So that the 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 that's the deluxe one, but he's done another one that's free, and you just get like some of the presets, but essentially it's made up of the same thing. So right. I do recommend it. Go try it. Yeah, it I'll, makes I'll, sense. Be, I'll be having a diddle. I would if I were you. I get lost in that. It'd be good for uh, getting an initial vibe of that because I end up going into guitar rig me and getting lost using all sorts of different. Because there's so many yeah, different options. Yeah, it's cool. It's it is cool. cool but yeah, so there you go. All made of. Um, I think it's always the argument. People say, "Oh, it's, it doesn't sound any any good to the Ableton amp." But you've got to put a cabinet, cabinet. with it, and you've got to put delays and reverbs and a bit of you know sort of equivalent you can put pedal as well now i think pedals in there so if you got like 10 onwards you, you can add crunch and it's all this about gain stages anybody who's ever used a proper footboard and amp combination you, you get it so have fun doing that so mm. yeah what do we like for time tim Ooh, we, do, oh. well, we are uh, 10, 12 so. minutes until we'll be expecting our guests okay well so continuing on from last week something that um that i tried now Back when we first started this broadcast, uh, I was going to say 12 weeks, but I had four weeks out for not being very well. Um, did I tell you I wasn't well? well uh, anyway. You did. You met yeah. Many times. Many yeah, times. So, well, yeah. So, um, where can we park us? Because like, everyone sees that bit there, you see. Because they, they see us. One day we'll have a, a much better solution, but for now. So when we first started these, which was some time ago, in fact, in February, it was that like Ableton Live 11 came out that week, wasn't it? It was like February 23rd. Yeah. And obviously we got a few features in there straight away just to kind of show people. And one of the ones that, that we loved from day one was the Spectral Resonator. Yes. And in the, my own tracks, I've sort of not used it that much. No, I... I'd take that back. I've used it in two places. I can think of where it is a big part of the sound. So we're looking at this remix that I'm doing for Sink Your Teeth. And um, I came up with this after the, the broadcast last week. And um, I thought, I'll just try Spectral Resonator. And, and this is kind of what I came up with. I'll just find where it is in the track. And uh, Tim actually said, oh, it sounds a bit like... And the, what he said, I've actually called it that. So oh, I'll try and hide <laughs> it. I'm going to hide it so you can't see. So um, this is the bit here, right? So I've sort of faded it in. So I call it Spectral Jam. So this is like um, a mix down of what, what I did. This is just the sound. So that, that's all that is, but I mean, it, it's uh, surrounded by a few of the sounds now. It's I agree that, it? So that's the previous bit. Mm. 
so it's kind of um, sustained a little bit and then jerky and then it kind of uh, it, it does I think I did something on the uh, I changed the I did something anyway oh yeah I used the preserved transients thing so when it comes in here it's Anyway, so I did that and mixed it out. So how I got to that was, um, if you remember the bass line from before, the reason I was like, oh, I'll use the spectral resonator is because I had some MIDI in the bass line. Just to give you a bit of context, this is a track that I had from ages ago, and it was in a totally different key, and this remix we're doing was in B minor, and this track was in F minor or something. So I transposed it all up, and it's sort of like, yeah, it was working. So this bass line is in the first part, which goes something like this. So that's the MIDI. So I'm fa thankfully kept the MIDI. So number seven, um, if I just loop that there, loop a section. So track seven, operator, amazing. Operator with a bit of pedal filtering. EQ, that's about it really, but I like that. And, and it, it's accompanied by a mood as well in the main bit that goes. And then there's the original bass guitar down here. Anyway, so I thought, okay, well, I've got some MIDI. So if I go back to here, um, I had these tracks and I bought the Spectral Resonator and I just went through them and just tried a few things. So I mixed them down onto that channel there. But what I did, um, there's a spectral resonator. And if I just pick one loop, I'll just solo one of these. I think it was this one. Oh no, this one, I'm sorry. Something like that. And then it's, I turn the spectral resonator on. Now you've got the internal, you, you play with the, the frequency there. And that gives you the um, the pitch. That's the pitch of the resonator, which is uh, in hertz. So you go here. Which is cool. But you if you put... Spectral you, do, you do, yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you put it on MIDI, it's going to listen. And obviously the bass line I just played you. Track 7, Operator. And then you've got Mono. Um, and polyphonic now mono obviously will only l process one note at a time um, now but this is a bass line but it kind of slides into other notes but anyway I'll do that and this is something what I did so I'll just show you what I did so to me the decay is like a big part of that that sound it really makes a difference you know it's um more percussive. Well, when you rend it back you mean yeah when you bring it back obviously yeah, it's more it's staccato great. and even when you change the harmonics really you know like that old mp3 vibe <laughs> but anyway so so i was thinking obviously right okay decay now you can see what i'm going to do because i've just got it right next to it there but what i discovered is if you put in pot um polyphonic even though it's not a chord being played at once it does seem to uh, jump around the notes more and for some oh, reason I, what's it picking up on there then Si? If well, it... it's, it's still operator and it's still the bass line but it must choose notes. I, I don't actually know like what it prioritizes, but um, when I put it in mono, you can sort of do a glide and it'll glide to the notes and stuff like that. But what I did anyway was I, I, th I think, I can't remember, but I think I mapped the LFO to the decay. And you can see the range there. It's not going all the way around. So you've got to get this sweet spot just right somewhere, then play it. You hear that <laughs> And 
then in polyphonic. Funny one. It's, it's yeah, so yeah, I actually can't remember exactly what I did, but I think that was um, it was certainly something that I thought, yeah, that's uh, that's working. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. and I just rendered out and put it in the track, and it's ended up being like favorite part of the track now. <laughs> so just when I thought it was over, and then you said, oh, it sounds a bit like Just Easter, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the actual I actually called the. Uh, just east build here so i'll just show you how it came in if i give you a little sneak of, of the 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 track from that bit so i, I was it on a bit because it's a bit boring but. but there will be vocals on these bits but the, the, there's a vocal that's going to be the chorus that sort of comes in i'll just play the drop and then go in play from there it's creeping up there Perfect timing, yeah. So it builds up and then the vocal comes in here. I got the same bit and just copied the track. Rather than automate the whole thing there, I just put um I just dropped it down and then put some LFO thing on it on the filter. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's gonna go something like that. So I reckon it's, you know, it's on its way. Remember, anyway, like, that, enough. That part is very justice. I love that. Yeah. It, it reminds me of uh, Phantom Part Two specifically. That was that was when I was living in a yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> I know the one. I know the one actually. Yeah. So let me just get you back on there. So skis at the door. Uh, stop screen sharing. Get you on there. So. Ski's here. I'm going to let him in. Before that, I'm going to play you something. Um, so Ski um, was a, a great contributor to um, Loop. It was 2017. Tell me if I'm wrong, though, when you, when you come on, Ski, because 2017 was in Berlin. 2018 was in L.A. There wasn't one in 19. Yeah, I think that's right. Did I say 2017? So, and this is um, one of his amazing deconstructions. He does point blank. This one's one of my favorites, and he did it in front of a live audience. I mean, normally does it in front of a uh, studio, but so he actually did it in real time, and it was astounding. So this is just a little clip of uh, from about 18 minutes in. This is on um, YouTube. Go and watch this. If either you like to know how tracks are made from scratch and all the ingredients, you're a massive Attack fan, um, or you're both of those things, <laughs> or you just want to know and just see how amazing this is. So I'll just drop this in, and we're going to... Uh, get skiing but check this out this is uh, unfinished sympathy just after ski sampled some of the breaks he's starting to put it together on push so here it is i suppose we could sweeten it up a little bit maybe put a bit of reverb on it why not beautiful Hit the level up a little bit Okay, so uh, now, because we, we, this is our, we're working on our second scene, and uh, I want to kind of keep in uh, this session view here so we can build up all the different sections of the track. So uh, this is our sort of basic, these are our basic parts. So I'm going to duplicate this uh, six times, and then we can start adding things to that section. And the next thing I'm going to add is the Planetary Citizen sample. So it's sampling time again. Bear with me. Here we go. Mahavishnu Orchestra, John McLaughlin, track three. Um, let's put it into record. Um, here we go. Okay, so let's find this bit. Make sure that's down. <laughs> Love is the answer to all the wars. When we love one another, we can 
Discogs, by the way, it wasn't cheap as well, um, so I better look after it. Um, not that I'm going to resell it or anything after this. Um, so yeah, we've got that. Let's hit convert. Let's put it into simpler again. Um, and we love one another. We get up, we get up Whoa, that's pretty lucky. <laughs> And we are back, and we have Ski with us. Big up, hey. Ski's in the house. <laughs> Welcome. <Hey>. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Mr. Oakenfall, a.k.a. Ski. And yes. I, I know your first name, but what I want to know is, how did Ski come about? Because I've got my theory, and I just... I just is, is right, it, well, is there's it, a story about is that. It's a story. Can we, can we start <laughs> with the story? Is that okay? Okay, so... Um, I, when I, my sort of formative years were the kind of uh, hip hop rave kind of years. So late eighties, nineties, and um, Adamski was around. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you know, he was a big part of that kind of rave scene. And um, yeah, I loved, I loved his album. And yeah, obviously, he's a, he was associated as, as being a keyboard player. So the band that I was in at the time, the K Creative, um, they named me. A Domsky because my name's Dominic. There you go. Uh, yeah. And so for a long time I was just a Domsky, and then it just got shortened to Ski. ski and ski. once a band start calling you something, then the record label start calling you something, and then and then your parents and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how that's how Ski came about, and it's just yeah, it's amazing that it's stuck. To be honest. Yeah. Well, no, but I I, I was guessing it was Domsky, but I didn't realise a Domsky, Domsky, and stuff like that. So. There there's another there's a there's a follow-on story from that where it, it, i basically i closed the loop of the whole thing <laughs> when i got adamski on to do a deconstruction yes, um yes. normally normally when i do a deconstruction <laughs> i just do it i i don't ever meet the artist i might somehow kind of get in touch with them to ask them about a, a sound or whatever yeah. but um i just i kind of hit him up on instagram and he got back to you really gracious really lovely and uh, and he came into Point Blank and he sat with me while I kind of interviewed him and I you know did the deconstruction and then he signed my record from one ski to another ski. I was yes. like, oh, <laughs> the loop is closed. That is a yeah. story. See, there you go, folks. On the on this show, you get the exclusive. But I, I like, I like it's all, stories are amazing. It's really good. So yeah. welcome. Thanks for coming on. And Thank um, you. it's a pleasure to have you on. I've got I've got loads of. Uh, nice things to say about you because um it's really good I, I got to meet you w like i think one one of the videos that i that you that i had on here was the the push two thing and I, I i came to see you just before before um you did that video i remember catching up with you then i think i was the first time i met you in real life yes that's <laughs> uh, right in the real world and met you several times since but the first time i actually saw you in real life was playing on stage of galliano at Glastonbury Festival, and wow. at the time it was um, you have to stop me if I'm wrong. What's the album with? Oh, the plot thickens, right? That's right. With um, Twyford Down. So yes. And I was big into Galliano. I was like, I used to have like way long hair, and I was like into jazz and funk and everything. Still am, you know. But yeah. uh, and Slayer at the same time. But um, <laughs> so yeah, I, w I was into all that stuff, and then eventually, years later, I got to meet Rob. And then you, and then Valerie, and then it was just like nuts. And you ended up working with these people that I used to like sort of go, oh, it's a cool band. And all my friends were into your band. So that's yeah. how I got to, got to see Ski. Here's the guy who plays keyboards for that band. And I've, well, I've, say, I've, uh, Rob, Rob says hello because Rob and Val say hello because I was around at their place last night, oh, actually. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they had, you know, equally good things to say about you as well. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. That's really good. Yeah, we'll say hi back because, uh, yeah, th they're always doing great things too, aren't they? So anyway, this is about you. So um, so you're, you're point blank still. And what is your actual title now? Because these things always change. So I didn't want to say it out loud. I wanted to. What's your title like at this moment in time? So I am the head of education and curriculum at Point Blank. Very nice. Yes. 
So, uh, so, so, so it's very important. <laughs> of course, it's the head. I just, like, just do courses and that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. No, I mean, there, there are quite there are people that we've had on on, he, on here. I, I think that have either been employees or um, past students of yours, because you've got quite a quite a, a list of people who've gone on to do great things from Point Blank, like loads. I mean, I, I don't want to misquote anyone, so. Um, yeah. You know, you've got all sorts of things, and you, you've got you've got like probably you know a, the best reputation of that kind of thing, and obviously your education. Everyone wants to learn stuff. Like I was thinking of a kind of a theme for this. Like you know, the idea of this show is we want to learn about not just the actual music itself, but the things associated with it, like the pressures, the mm. the, um, the the sort of hurdles that everyone has to leap over and stuff like that. So. I'd like to ask you about that as well, because obviously you you just said you're starting in the, the rave scene and stuff like that and the hip hop stuff. And mm. you've got some some classic stuff in your rack there, but obviously you're using Ableton Live and you have to teach using other DAWs as well. So what's kind of we had Cy Medway Smith on as well um, a couple of weeks ago. And one thing that we, we, we managed to sort of ask him and, and see if you think the same thing, um, having knowledge of the original hardware. So, like mixing desks and you know all the outboard stuff. Do you think it's really people who have never done that should go back and just try and use old gear to understand what compressors are and what reverb is and things like that? I don't think it's um, absolutely fundamentally important because you know people who haven't had that experience are making incredible music. Yeah. Um, for me, I just I've kind of you know been lucky enough to have kind of seen seen you know you know some part of that kind of technological journey through. So you know when I sort of started out, I started out with a four track, a DX7 and a TR505, wow. and you know I was kind of having to use like sound on sound techniques and nothing to do with the magazine, although I have got the first issue. Um, <laughs> but you know those kind of overdubbing and getting really frustrated and you know. And and then, you know, I remember I got my first sampler, which is like a Roland S10, which had about oh, I don't yeah. know, <laughs> four four seconds of sampling. And, you know, and then and then I kind of got a, uh, a distortion pedal and then I you know gradually you're kind of adding to those 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 bits. So I think, what you know, whenever a new bit of kind of well, as doors evolved, the fact that you could recreate all those sound like delays and reverbs and you've just got all these synths, FM synth or analog synth, whatever, you've just got it at your fingertips. Mm. It just gives you this enormous appreciation of the power that you've got. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I wouldn't want to say that anyone doesn't appreciate that, but I can't, I'm just very grateful that I've had, yeah. I've seen that evolution. Um, and, and I know, I mean, I've got, I know you probably can't see it, but I've got a Rodin Space Echo up there. Yes. And, just the fact that you know you can recreate tape delays now is just amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it's just brilliant. So yeah, those those kind of things. But at the same time, um, I also still love using hardware mm. because I love the sort of randomness. I love the the mixing of the two, you know. And I think yeah, there's a sentimental side to what I've done as well, where I kind of I'll listen back to something I did 20 years ago and think, oh, what was I using then? Oh God, yeah, I was using a desk and I was using an SH101 and and that. And, you know, I'm, it was all those sort of happy accidents that happened around using hardware. Mm. Um, so yeah, you know, it's uh, it's really, there's no there's no kind of like right or wrong or whatever. It's just, yeah. I just feel lucky, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, fortunate. Because I, I would say like, you know, I, I'm always, uh, I always combat the word lucky, but I'm sure that you... Uh, went out of your way to acquire the dx7 you, it wasn't didn't just like land did it you had to no do, do, do <laughs> stuff to get it so yeah i think it's it's kind of a it's a it's a journey isn't it really it's like you've had the fortunate to be in that time but i think um you know when when we say to youngsters like you know my my kids or whatever like oh you know I try not to use the expression, you don't know how lucky you are. Well, they don't know how lucky they are because they've been born into a world that we've created and we've made all these things accessible yeah. and affordable and whatever. So, yeah, they don't know. It's what they do with that equipment now and that process. So, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I, I like the way you're saying it, that, that it's kind of, you've got to experience it and you were born into it. You make you make with what you've got, don't you? So if you've yeah. only got a laptop, you've only got a laptop. 
So. I think, and I think you know, there's the, you can you can be uh, overwhelmed with parameters, you know. Yeah. It's like well, why are those parameters there in the first place, you know? <laughs> and you know, you can just twiddle around and find out what they do, you know. But if you kind of know why they're there, then 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 I think you can maybe reach reach a goal a bit quicker as well because you kind of you know what you want to achieve. Yes. And you've sort of already got an idea of how you want Tim to achieve is, it. Tim is on this journey right now, aren't you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what, what happens to me, Ski, is I load something up and I go, oh, I'm going to delve in. And then there's too many buttons, so I, so I delete it and get rid. Because <laughs> I don't know what they mean. So it's, oh, no, it's too complicated. That will get rid. Which is which is crazy, really, because I've got a good base knowledge, but I don't I don't trust myself with them. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know what I do, I'm doing in the way that you've just been kind of referring to. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'll caveat that with that. I'm not. I'm not an expert on every single parameter of, of everything in any yeah. way at all. You know, but um, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, a, g a general understanding is good enough to to keep moving forward rather than yeah. get hung up on you know every single um, every single part of a compressor or every, you know. I mean, you can you can look at devices, but like the spectral resonator that we were just showing then. It's yeah. like you could spend ages going over every single thing, but if you just turn it and go, ooh, that's good. If, you yeah. go, if your goal is to make crazy sounds, then just do that, you know. Yeah. And, and you're good at that, Tim, so do that. <laughs> do, do more of that and do more less like of that. the uh, diddling with things you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> diddling with things you don't understand, volume one by Tim, <laughs> Tim from Lost Light. <laughs> there you go. So, Ski, let's talk about your music right now. Where, where, where are you up to right now? Because I do believe... You have finished an album that you sent me a link to. I wasn't sure whether you want me to play it or not, so I I, I held back because um, I'd rather you present the music. But so tell us what you're working on right now because I'm reading what you'd put on the the Sound um, Cloud link. There is a bit of a story to that as well. It's kind of from a few different eras and things like that. So yeah, I mean, it's ultimately it's kind of a you know as with everyone, it's an exercise on in, on finishing things off. <laughs> <laughs> Come and see. which we all know about yeah and it, it, it's increasingly hard these days you know because i've got a full-time job uh, at point blank and i've got kids and family and so you know finding finding time to finish things off it's, it's generally easy to start things you know whether that's a four bar loop or you know sometimes taking it a bit further um so i'd actually been working on another project which was an album project of this i've got this project called iota oh yeah i've got a track here for that one yeah. Oh, right. Cool. Well, I was anyway, I was on holiday. I went to Cornwall last year. Uh, we obviously didn't go abroad. And I was just listening through to, you know, some bounces. And I was thinking, come on, I've just got to finish this stuff off. This this can definitely make an album. <laughs> it, it just sounded like it was forming an album. So I just got really organized. I kind of got all the demos. I got all the projects together. Some of the projects I'd started 10 years ago. So I had to re recall them, um, you know, find plugins that I didn't I didn't have um, <laughs> and sort of try to find them on CDs and reinstall them. Um, and yeah, and I just sort of spent spent a couple of months just literally doing recalls and just getting all the projects. So they were kind of re at a point where I could start working on them. Mm. Um, and then I just I just went for it. And, I, and my rule was I can't move on to the next one until I finish the one I'm working on. Um, and I and I probably I started doing that around September when I got back from holiday and then finished it about a month ago and it ended up being 14 tracks. And cool. um, and I was all the time I was thinking, OK, what's the title of it going to be? So I ended up calling it Short Circuits. I was sort of thinking, oh, well, they're just short, small kind of ideas. Um, and they've sort of come. I don't know. There were like various reasons I called it, but I thought I, I'm, I've stuck with it. And that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to call it. Good. And um, yeah, and I and I finished it, and and I've just I've literally I've uploaded it to the aggregator. I've got my brother to do the artwork. Um, a friend of mine, Simon Cotsworth, uh, who's an engineer from this band Incognito, who I've known for oh, years. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar he, era as Galliano, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. So I've known him for years. Um, he's he's living in in Indonesia now, um, and he said, "Look, can I?" He looks after my website, and he goes, "Look, I've just got the." mastered for itunes accreditation and I'm, I'm you know can i master it for you and i was like yeah brilliant yeah, so please, please do <laughs> and he sent it back to me i was just like oh my god what have you done you know it's just it's just yeah i was really really happy Fantastic. um so yeah and it's, it's due for release on june the 25th i'm really excited about it i'm now got it's just this realization it's got, I'm, I'm releasing it myself i've got a label called prime audio records that i set up years ago 
but I'm now reacquainting myself with what a big job it is to oh, actually yeah. release music and like promo artwork you know all the all the things that go around it um but luckily i'm at point blank so i've got lots of people to help me and and you know advise yes. me and there are courses there and you yeah, know i was going to say that about yeah. exactly that stuff so it's it's yeah, yeah it's, it's, you're in the right place i'm in the right yeah, place definitely. yeah right that that sounds great are you, are you okay to play us something an example either a, a live project or just a track yeah sure sure well so i've got a have got a track um called jam state and i've got it in ableton um I, can i share my screen you can indeed yeah you should be able to i've not got no restrictions on this i don't think um let me see yep uh one of these up. things it's like i've been doing this for the last year yep. and i still haven't really mastered it you know yeah, yeah you're good <laughs> there you go there we go all right yep. so yeah i'll play i'll play the track um and do you want to check Sam first before you launch in? Just so we just check a bit of audio. And yeah. yeah, is that all right? Straight away, that's good, yeah. Okay, cool. Look, I'll play through the track. I'll sort of mess around with a few, you know, tracks or whatever, and then, and then I'll talk about it. Awesome. Thank you. All right, here we go. This is Jam State. Coming in in a minute. Hey, there you go. It's all good. <laughs>
Hey. There we go. That was great, man. <laughs> We're just Thanks. nodding and smiling. It was so like it positive. It just like makes yeah. me smile all the way through it. <laughs> yeah, um, good work, man. Yeah. So this this came out of um a deconstruction, actually. And I don't know if you could guess what Yeah, de- I'm guessing. Yeah, all right, it's pretty obvious. No, no, uh, it's not obvious, but go on. Yeah. Go on. Like. So, yeah, no, it was the um, 808 State um, track. Uh, so, yeah, um, Pacific 707, yes. um, which is one I did a few years ago. Uh, it was um, it was actually at Psalm Studios in front of Trevor Horn because it came out on ZTT. So it was wow. a bit kind of intimidating. But, um, yeah, so the, I suppose, yeah, it was it was an example of where you I spent a lot of time on that deconstruction and actually I got in touch with Graham Massey on yeah. Twitter because there was one sound I was really struggling with and he, he was very kind. He'd tell me, tell yeah, me what yeah. it was. Um, and so, yeah, I basically, you know, I spent a long time doing the deconstruction and then I ended up with a template and it was just literally messing about with some of the sounds. Uh, one of the sounds was the was the pad sound, which uh, is this so whereas the, the actual chords are oh, yes. <laughs> which was a, a which was a juno 106 um i found out so i just kind of had that sound and i you know i'd got, got a bit of processing on it and it was just sounding really good and then and then i just um started playing these chords And I just thought, oh, okay, that's a track, you know. So, um, oh, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely. And what was great is, it, I mean, it's it's the real. Th- I mean, I don't I don't actually spend a lot of time like specifically creating templates for my compositions, mm. but this was where I did actually have a template of sounds ready readily available. I had the nine oh nine, and I had um, that kind of D fifty, which is that UVI plugin, um, because that was that was that was actually the sound that I was asking him for. It was this. Kind of sound which which wow. I, i've added some kind of effects on afterwards but i was like wondering what that was and he said oh yeah um i just kind of went down on the black notes and recorded that in and then quantized it into 16ths and i kind of got that i think i've actually got i've got uh the recording of, of the bounce of i think yeah that kind of sound <laughs> right. it was basically <laughs> that you know so um so yeah that's kind of how the track started and um wow yeah good move good move i was uh, just a couple of things from the the chat there Uh, hang on oh 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 what's going on here ignore that this is trying to be organized there you go so um ned rush was saying classic think break the the break that was in there yeah well there's a story around that as well (laughs) so i was i was kind of um i don't know if you know that an artist called lone um is one of my favorite uh dance art dance uh, artists and he released an ep a couple of years ago with this track pulsar on it and i just thought oh it really reminds me of that a future sound of london and that that kind of sound so i was searching for that type of break and then i came across um this which i think i think i had it in my in my sample library uh it was like an old future music cd and it just had oh wow all those breaks on it um in fact i think i've got it somewhere in here it's no in... way yeah um is it together lone, with... l-o-n-e l-o-n-e yeah yeah, yeah. so oh here we go oh, so that's man. it and i thought well, yeah i've got to got to use it so um absolutely it, it was it was used like well you know what i mean really like it was not like the main driver obviously like you know like a hip-hop artist would probably that be the main driver of the track wouldn't it but it was like you know su- su- subtly interspersed yes it was, uh, it was good man i really like it and obviously the choice of synths i was thinking that's got that you know 808 state vibe to it and yeah yeah you know that that's uh now really good but it was really sort of uh like uplifting straight away like just caught that that whole era oh great and, uh, yeah yeah and it was i put in the chat room there it was uh very nice to see a, a legit version of silent that's very rare <laughs> Never <seen. laughs> actually licensed two and it was like actually your name it's, uh, never seen actually that. my name yeah. yes that, that, you probably broke the internet because of that now <laughs> actual legit version of silent used in uh live webinar 
I'm yeah. I'm a loyal Lena Digital, you know, yeah. devotee. No, it's, it's it's a great synth. I, actually, I, I've I had it years ago, and I've not like bought it or anything since. But the reason I got it was we did it very, a long time ago. We did this thing at Point Blank called Acad the Academy of Electronic Music, and uh, it was basically like we ran a competition. It was involving Google and Armada Music, and oh, yeah. um, seven people won this competition out of about a thousand to do like a month long sort of yeah we did like a daily webinar basically and i was hosting wow. it they were sending in all these tracks and they they all had they're all made with silence and i was like well i need to own it i need, I need yeah. to be able to look at their project so yeah just certain things do certain sounds very well don't they and it's it's not yeah. like a one for all sort of thing and i'm, yeah. I'm just kind of looking at I'm, I'm really like pleased that we're not pleased but I'm, it's nice to see that you've used a lot of the ableton kits there yeah the 909 yeah yeah so that so this is yeah um you know it's the uh core 909 and um with some with some processing on it i mean of course the drum bus which uh oh, yeah, that, that works. i use on everything i think it's yeah. uh it's it's gorgeous i've i'm just going to quickly solo solo the drums um so i always like to i always like to do a before and after that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm a sucker for the transient. Oh, yeah. I, I use it just for that sometimes. Just for yeah. transient. Yeah. Um, and then I've kind of um, put in a bit of, you know, a bit of process, a bit of EQ with the with the um, Sound Toys, Psy EQ. Yeah. Uh, so. So without it. I like that cheeky little uh, open hi hat there as well. Just uh, <laughs> yeah, and there's one trick that I I kind of uh, like doing, which is um, just adding some kind of delay automation on the hi hat. Ah. Uh, so if I just oh, sorry, let's get that away. So it's just I've actually got like the old version of the of the delay there. You can see I haven't even upgraded it. Shall I upgrade it? I'll upgrade it now. Oh, there you go. It's upgraded. Oh, oh no! Oh, it's gonna no. Lose, it's gonna lose the sound. It's all gone. Um, yeah. No, it's it all works exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's just. So what what you doing? You just automating a bit of delay. Just a, just the send, and it just gives a bit of kind of. You know, adds a bit yeah. of kind of texture. You know, the the ping pong delay. Ah, so just, there, yeah. just a bit, a bit of width, and it just you know, I think that's it's generally my kind of mission is to just to make program drums sound live and sound mm. a bit more interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, and neat. so adding adding in fills and extra kicks and snares and you know all those. It's kind of really important, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's got a little bit of a, it's got a definite groove to it. You know, which. Um... I've been going through some of the tracks you sent me, and it's like, oh yeah, there's there's, there's definite groove in these, <laughs> you know. It's uh, <laughs> definitely what what is the uh, Porter lead? What's that? Porter lead. I'm pretty sure that is. Um... There we go. Yeah, it's an anal analog synth. Yeah. Yeah, it's the analog. Yeah. Um, let me just find it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean analog is just is just fantastic i remember like one of the i think the, the first ever tutorial video i did was trying was showing like how to you know recreate an sh101 with analog and i kind of had the sh101 a camera on it like next to it and then you know the, the uh, this and i kind of i made a ma i built a rack and with some macros and showing kind of lfo filtering and stuff and it's just i've always loved it i just think it sounds fantastic still yeah, use it all the time that's a great sound absolutely yeah, I'm just seeing uh, if anybody asked any more questions. Oh, is it proper warm, sunny vibes? Let me put that. Uh, it's a beauty. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, lots of love for your track there. So uh, great. So the the plan is to get this this out as a collection. It's it's an album of of how many tracks? Did you say it was fourteen? Did you say? Yeah. So this is this is the sort of the secret. A bit of a plug here. Sorry. This is this is the secret sound. Oh, no, do do not apologize. This is what you're here for. This is right. This is right. This is how it is. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, fourteen tracks, um, and yeah, it's it's just going to come out digitally um, to start with, uh, and it'll come out on all the all the platforms. Yeah. And 
yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the strategy, you know, if I should kind of do a pre-order and then release like one track a week, you know, up until the release date. And, you know, just trying to figure out the best thing to do. I don't, I don't think anybody really knows the answer anymore, do they? This is what, like, Tim did everything for, we, we put um, three songs out this time last year, was it, Tim? Yeah. Just yeah. about, about no, in, in June, July, June. Mm. And, uh, yeah, it nearly killed you, didn't it, Tim? <laughs> Just... Oh, I, I loved it. I loved it. So I, I was doing what I love, and uh, for for about well, it was, pre- it was probably about eight weeks. You know, I was solid at it, but I, but I'm like this me ski. I, I go at stuff like hundred mile an hour. Yeah, I end up burning myself out, and I end up having like a little bit of a plummet at the end of it. I know. It takes, yeah. it takes me a week or two to to pull myself out of there, and then I'm kind of back to normal levels. But no, it, it was um, it was hard work, and I understand what, what you asking yourself that question. I, my my initial response, but who am I, would be to to do it like you just said there, because then you've got constant excuses to be talking to people, haven't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, Fourteen mini release, campaigns. Exactly. Mm. Whereas you release everything at once, and it's yeah. it's like well. It, it's it's over in a flash, isn't it? Whereas you mm. want to be, keep get people's interest and then show them something else and then show them a bit more and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Um, I just well, I, you know, if if I had the time, I'd I'd want to make a little DIY video for YouTube for these tracks as well. And you know, I was out the weekend, the sunny weekend down at King's Cross, and I've got one of these like gimbals for my um, my uh, oh, yeah. phone, and I was taking all this great footage, you know, and it's like. I just want to edit it all now, but it's just finding the time to do it. Speaking of footage, actually, I don't think I've got the video ready to play, but one of the videos that you sent, um, let me see if I can get it up. Speaking of clothing as well, you're wearing a very nice suit. Um, I think it's, is it Tres Condiola? I don't know how you say it. That the video. Tres, yeah, very good. Yeah, Tres Condiola. Yeah. Condiola. And and that's just you, you and Valerie. I, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna try and get it up whilst we're talking because uh, that is that is that is one suit, mate. That is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't see. choose to wear that. I, there was a stylist, um, uh, and I, they were just they were just turn up turn up and we'll style you. And yeah. uh, I was like, all right, I'll just go with it. You know, someone from the label told me, but I, I'm I'm gonna put it on that. I'll, I'll go over the the ski at loop bit. I'll change the media source because it's got to be seen. All right. <laughs> Dave Henkel says, love that you went back 10 years to finish tracks. Gives me hope for the three yes. computers full of four bar loops. After <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I was, I was, I was going to comment on that when you said it, actually, because you must have one thing that you did say, which is like I tell everybody, including myself and Tim and everybody that you said you listened to some bounces whilst you were away from the computer, as far away as the computer as you could be in at the time. And you listen back to it completely without in the screen in front of you with different surroundings and actually thought, it's actually quite good, this, isn't it? You know, that you must have had that feeling. And then you thought, shit, I better finish these. You know, I mean, that's kind of, I went through the same thing. Um, I don't know how long ago. I don't want to put a time on it now, but it's the exact same thing. It's just like, well, I need to li- have a legacy behind me. I've, at least I did something. I finished some tracks. So yeah exactly that but you you must have yeah. believed in the tracks to go back and then spend all that time finding all the right plugins and stuff like that because most people would be like couldn't be bothered you know and but to get the original spark you probably needed that sound didn't you or that plug yeah vibe. well it's 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 part of the obsession that probably made me you got me into doing deconstructions you know yes. it's literally becoming obsessed by getting the exact same sound even if i didn't originally make it you know you know, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I noticed that actually when you were talking before, Steve, because because you were saying, you know, I needed to go back and find some of these old plugins that I might not have used for ten years, and I was thinking, if if we had done that, we probably had like given up after a go. We we we'll just remake it. But, <laughs> but, but that 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 nature is has got its uh its its own qualities, aren't it? Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah OCD I'm... or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm trying to put a track together. Um. Tim knows uh, Tom Piper. Tom's in um, New Zealand at the moment. He went over to New Zealand with Andy C's, Andy C's MC. Right. And we're working on this track, which is uh, another one that's very mank. Everything I do at the moment to do it, where I'm not working with Tim, I work with other people. It always just sounds very mank, but I think it's because <laughs> I work with people from right. Manchester. <laughs> so, well, there you go. And, and uh, he, he's, I've done this. I, I don't want to spoil his thunder. I'll just tell you what it is, but I'm trying to 
tell him like look i can't find this sample i don't know where it is and you know obviously i know how to find missing samples in ableton live i said it's just not here mate he went no no it's part of it it's on your desktop and blah 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 and like mm. you do realize that was a over a year ago b a different version of live c a different computer right and it's just like oh man but yeah it's like was it something that is the clincher for the track or would it not be the you know but we didn't have a a, a decent bounce of it anyway so we just kind of nah, i'll just move it on but <laughs> the 11 hour time difference doesn't help either for, you know yeah. at the moment, but. got a question for you by the way ski oh yeah um, dave henkel says uh what was the hardest deconstruction and are there any any you had to abandon so any you've started Ooh, and then thought question. fuck this <laughs> good question david uh yeah, there was. Um, oh god, yeah, there was. Def there was definitely some. There was. I was going to do Ghost Town actually. Oh, what a track! Yeah, an amazing track. Um, and I sort of. I, I think I could have got there, but I just. It was. It was quite difficult with all the brass and everything. It yeah. was just you know, because ultimately, you, you know, I could do it and I could get in a brass section or I could find the sounds or whatever. But it was just. It was just. I then got. I've then got to actually sort of perform it, you know, and, and turn it into a video. So I don't think I, uh, I, did, I got very far with that. There was another one actually that was um, Diplo Skrillex and Justin Bieber track. <laughs> and this sounds like an interesting deconstruction. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and that was that was like that was really hard. And it shouldn't have been hard because they even made some kind of video like talking about how they sampled Justin Bieber's sound and then made it into a kind of baseline or something. Yeah. And I was just spending hours trying to do the same thing and just couldn't do it. Um, but uh, I just think as far as like uh, the hardest one that I've actually done, that I don't know, actually, they're all, they've all sort of got their own journeys. I think there was one, there was a Todd Terrier De um, DeLorean Dynamite. That was, yeah. that was, that was pretty tough. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I sort of, I tend to kind of, once I've done one, I'll move on to the next one and forget about it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I presume that you did say as well that I could ask you about the the one at loop because it was that was a live one so you didn't there was no edits or anything no no I mean I thought yeah I mean we it was it, it was edited a bit afterwards by our, by our team at point blank mm -hmm. um but yeah actually performing it it was having to perform it live and yeah I'd sort of I'd had a few beers the night before <laughs> in Berlin <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and um and it was one of these things where you kind of because it, it, it's um, it's in the funk house, so as you, as you well know, it's yeah. it's you know it's a bit of a drive um, out of central central Berlin. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And you kind of you know we all kind of went there in the bus in the morning, and then I don't think my thing was until I don't know like six in the evening or something. Mm. So you're sort of it's like a pre gig thing. You're just kind of hanging about, and you know you're you can't really enjoy the other things no. that are going on because you're so sort of tense, stressed yeah. about, about oh, this yeah. thing. And I was. And then um, the turnaround was really quickly, was really quick in between the acts. Uh, so, or the, the performers. And I remember kind of standing at the side and I, and it was like, okay, you've got 10 minutes. And I had to set everything up on the table in 10 minutes at, at the side. Um, and including, thing is there was like microphone, there was the deck that had to be plugged in. Yeah, it yeah. was, and, and literally then you're on, it's like, okay, now ski, uh, you know, do, do deconstruction. And it was one of those things was like, look, anything could go wrong here but i just hope it doesn't because there is like 300 people in the most beautiful venue with the most amazing sound system uh you know and it's an amazing track and it was just yeah it was one of these like things which thank god it, it yeah. just to have pulled it off was amazing you know no, it, it was it was awesome mate it, it really <laughs> was it really was awesome yeah um, just you can stop uh, stop your screen share oh sorry yeah 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 no, sorry. it's all right just um so we can yeah. see more yeah, of yeah. Uh, your face okay. and your vibe but yeah no that i i thought it was great just going back to the um ghost town thing when you said that i was like i chuckled to myself because when i was at, i went to salford uni to do popular music and recording quite, quite a while ago and mm. we were given ghost town in the in first year to transcribe the whole track right and, um <laughs> i was just like i mean i was i went there as a guitarist who was still yeah. like i hadn't been playing that long when i went and i just kind of immersed myself with all these musicians which were far more advanced on their journey than i was but we had literally had to say who's got the drums who's got the drums and like go around the the halls of residence sort of like, somebody's got the drums and then we go right who's got the uh who's got the brass stabs and we go we literally right. go i went on a trek to try and steal all the bits from people 
I still yeah. got I still got it wrong. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, that is a track. So when you said deconstruction of that, I mean, it is such a vibe that track though. It's amazing. I absolutely love yeah. it. But I feel I feel like I should do it now. I've I've still got the project, you know. Oh, so uh, I'll see how I remind myself here. how far I actually got with it. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it is it is wicked. I did a live thing um, last year with um, with SK Slow Mo, and we used that to sort of a, a mashup. He he started one track. His audience picked a track for him, and then one for me. Then we mm. started a remix, and then. We, we did it in splice i think at the time we probably use something else now and then we went away swap projects and i mashed up what he did and he mashed up what i did and oh um, wicked but he started off with uh ghost town and i was like yeah oh yeah because he's just got that that really like that organ that sort of really skanky little organ and oh yeah, yeah. do you know yeah. the track tim do you know it ghost town no i don't think so i i, I, I <laughs> as soon as you hear though, it you'll go do. yeah you will you'll hear me go, oh yeah that's the one but what a track what, what a track what yes a track. i know so <clears throat> i've got another track to play let me just see if i can get the um i've got the acoustic performance of you uh playing with galliano so i'll just i'll just play that because i said before that um this is when i first saw you now, now this is a it's only on for a little bit the, the you're playing an acoustic performance and you've got long hair <laughs> and yes. you are playing in this and this is with uh all Valerie the and days Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm, can't grow any at all anymore, <laughs> Skate. It's gone. <laughs> I'm getting there, believe me. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, you no, two no, mate, are you're, smashing you're, it. You're, you're doing, doing well, mate. You're doing well, definitely. You're, you're, yeah, you're on the right side of the fence there. It's, it's all or nothing, isn't it, really? You know, I mean, I've just took yeah, the, the, the lockdown don't, don't cling, and you don't look like you're clinging at all, Skate. Nah, you're nah, you're smashing it. But, but so, clingers, no, just once it gets to a certain point, just... Get it off. Just get yeah. it off. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think I've got I, this one I can play, and I've, I've got us at the bottom so we can have a little chat while it's on as well. But okay, it's, it's cool. only on for a little bit. So this is, um, it, it should work. It should come on. And so this is, yeah, we're in the corner. Now that he fell. So this is you, Valerie. That's it here, the, and I wonder. Sunglasses. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the, the sort of lineup of Galliano was very kind of like funky. Um, I I loved the sound because I mean that the song that I, I referred to before, one of my favorites, um, Twyford Down's got that really lovely guitar sort of, and when when I, when I saw it playing at Glastonbury, it was really windy and sunny, and it was just like it was a real vibe, and I've I've never forgot that. I just think. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, that was that was great. You know, I I, I was really um, fortunate to to join um, Galliano. That I took over from Mick Talbot, um, who was their first keyboard player from Star Council. All oh, right. Star Council, um, and so yeah, and I you know I've been in you know have been in this other band K Creative and done some and Raw Stylus as well. So I some done some other bands, but it was like it was a real like going into something that was a much bigger operation mm. and i had a keyboard tech i was like what yes. <laughs> someone someone's going to set my keyboards up for me you know it was it was it was really weird i was like no it's okay you don't have to so if I'm, <laughs> I'm really used to tuning my roads you know um but uh yeah it was and you know they were like it was big tour bus and trucks and light you know lampies and you know it was just, yeah Awesome. Uh, it, was, it was amazing amazing so, experience and how long did you do that for what from what period 
Um, so I think that was around 94 to 96, 97. Right. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that track was from the album Four, which, uh, which I actually co-produced and worked wow. with Rob on right from demo stage. You know, we, we set up a studio in Kentish Town together and um, right. we spent a year kind of writing and recording um, and then going in with, with Demas, Dill, I think you know yes, as well. Yes, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, so, yeah, yeah we went in and kind of mixed it and we went to a residential studio. It was it was, it was, was a great time. It really was. Oh, so, yeah, so yeah the, I mean, you don't have to answer this if, if, it's a, if it's a touchy subject, so I'll swerve off, but I couldn't, 4 isn't on Spotify. Is that because, did you, was it released on a different label or something? No, I don't know. I, I honestly just don't know. Uh, it's weird. I mean, it's, it's weird with Spotify. Like, my first two solo albums aren't on Spotify either. And the second album, um, Rising Sun, was on it for about two months. And right. then it just got taken off. And it's, right. yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't yeah, know what all it right, was. That's yeah. Fine. yeah, I was just thinking, because four, I was like, that That was the, was that the last the last album? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I was looking for that. Um, I just remember, was it Ease Your Mind? Was that the, the, the lead yeah. track? Yeah, see, I remember that. See, and, and I just remember the video, like Valerie's spinning around something or flying through the yeah. air or something. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, that's the a distant memory of that. So I'm, 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 I'm amazed I remember the name, but I never got to see you after the Glastonbury gig of, that I saw, which I think was 95. Does that, does that yeah. fit with your timeline? Yeah, um, I think, that's I think you put some video footage from channel four on facebook a few years ago and i thought that's the one i saw i think so. yeah yeah yeah. i just had it on a vhs yeah. and i transferred it and um yeah it's had about seventy thousand views or something which is just and yeah. rightly so and rightly so yeah. so just um we'll let you go shortly but just before you do um to tell us about what's what's next well, we know what what's next with the album but tell us a little bit about the other projects i've got a video here oh right um, yeah so yeah, I won't go on about it too much, but I've got this other project called IOTA, right? And it's really of uh, it's my it's sort of the the side of me that is really passionate about uh, ambient music, electronic music, artists like Brian Eno, yeah, David David Sylvian, oh. you know, that that kind of that kind of world, and um, combined with my love of Japan. So uh, yeah, I've I've kind of been going to I went I first went to Japan I think nineteen ninety two um with with the first band i was in it was part of a talking loud tour ah. uh, and yeah kind of completely fell in love with it and have been kind of finding ways to go go back there i kind of go there go back there very regularly and yeah um so it was really just trying to sort of capture that feeling of what what it's like being in japan and whenever i went i take loads of field recordings and bring them back and i start chopping them up and you know using them in in tracks um, and then i hooked up with a, a poet Japanese poet and recorded them and was like okay I'm going to try to put some music to that so yeah I've done like I've done three albums now and I've got I'm working on the fourth one at the moment which I sort of put on hold to get this one current one finished um, but I'm now going to revisit that and start working with some vocalists um, and hopefully get that finished this year if I can yeah yeah I hope so so the, the track you get you you um, directed me towards is really nice I mean it's something that that uh, Tim and I, despite the sort of the variety of things you listen to, we like we like all kinds of stuff, don't we? Like, I mean, sort of things like you know Oliver Arnold's and uh, Nils Fram and stuff like that. I mean, you know, yep. just the the music that just just helps you um, just relax a little bit. <laughs> you know, this kind of <laughs> and it yep. sounds really obvious, you know, oh ambient music and whatever. But it's, I think in this day and age, especially if you're it's just it's certain modes of life, isn't it? You just need to just kind of not yeah. have, you know. I always, I always like to have something on, and I just find like piano and just different thing. I, I, I want to be a much better pianist. I'm not a pianist. I'm, I, I play keyboards a little, but uh, I want to have a piano so I can just do that. I'd love yeah. to be able to play piano. Mm. I've been thinking you about time it for in. ages. Uh, did you, <laughs> did you say sorry, Ski? Then that uh, you've already finished a couple of albums of of, of that stuff. Yes, yeah. So that, is, is it is it accessible for everybody? It, it, it is actually, yeah. It's on it, those albums because I release them on my label. Um, apart from the first one, actually, which um, came out on a label called Third Ear, but, but yeah, they are they are all on um, Spotify. So yeah, it's right, well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll be checking them out as soon as we're finished here because you, you sold right. it to me. Yeah, because because I, I knew the concept behind it. I, I I'll be I'll be sat there and I'll be all happy listening for it. Oh, yeah, body. Can you hear that? 
so, <laughs> so I, I, I'm in definitely. Oh, great, fantastic. Good. Well, is it an appropriate track to finish with? Would you say to let people drift off into the evening? Yeah, yeah, I think Good. that's nice. It's <laughs> because... uh, yeah, I'm on I'm on leave for the next couple of days, oh, so uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm chilling. Good. Probably it's appropriate. Enjoy. Well, mm. we'll leave you with that then. I'm I'm going to play that track. Thanks so much for coming on. It's been awesome. Thank you very much, Pat. Just really insightful and uh, great to hear what you're doing. And, yeah, well, um, it's, it's an honour. Yeah, thank you so much for for having me on. And uh, you know, it's also great that you know to to see what you're doing. You know that this live streaming thing. It's something that I've been dabbling with myself you know yeah. and, I, and I just think it's uh it's it's great what you're doing you know building the community and engaging people and yeah, yeah it's, i'm uh, glad you think so. so and and for everyone that's watching whether you're live or replay uh ski's been doing ski sundays since the beginning of the year is that right you've been doing them yep yeah and that's right ski yeah. sunday you never guess what day of the week it's on. <laughs> so do, do check that out and uh anyone that arrived here because you were watching that and then you came here that's a great little loop we've got going there so that's yeah cool. share the love uh for both ways likes and subscribes help people that were making these uh broadcasts know that you care and you want more so uh, do, do let people know when i used to watch these things it was like, like and subscribe and click the bell so you get notified and i'm thinking all right all right and as soon as you start doing it yourself you think is anybody really watching do, do you know <laughs> and it's like yeah it really helps so we do say this and we're not like hard pluggers that we just say this but it helps so get over yeah. to um to ski so th where can people find if they want to just find ski sunday what's the best place you've got twitch and facebook if i'm right I know that yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you, and you can go if you go onto my website, skioconfall.com. I've got I've got all the links in the top left hand corner. There's a link to Twitch and awesome. uh, Discord and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's basically twitch.tv skioconfall. So should be I'll link it all in the description as well when when we oh, get it as well. Yeah, Thanks a lot. The video. So it's been great to have you. Um, what's goodbye in Japanese? Um, sayonara. Sayonara. Yeah. I've yeah. Got konnichiwa. I've got that. And uh, yeah. arigato for thank you. Yes, and I'm yeah. done. And I'm or, done. Or, or you could say you could say matane, which is see you next matane. time. Matane, matane. So thank you so much, though. It's been a, it's been an honor and a pleasure. More thank like this, much. and good luck with the record. And uh, let me know when it's out and everything. And, Give uh, us a nod, Jim. We'll we'll uh, we'll do another shameless plug of it on on a episode nearest episode. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Without really a doubt, it. without a doubt, for sure. All right. So we'll leave you. So the name of the track. Is what it does actually say that on this one. It does say it when it comes on. So, um, I but, but what what is it called again? The one you sent me. The, um, it is called uh, Hidamari, I think. That, I think, think that's what I sent you. Sounds about right. Yeah. 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 That's the one. <laughs> that so sounds it sounds that. about right. No, I did actually because it, it does say and there's a train at the beginning and everything. I, I've I've watched yeah. and listened to it. Well, he was actually saying he was glad that you pronounced that. <laughs> <laughs> Am I so transparent? Yeah. So. Thank it actually you. it means it means sunny spot in Japanese. So, oh well, uh, I got a sunny spot just on my neck there. In the <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Well, thanks so much, everybody in the chat room. Thanks a lot as usual. Thanks, guys. You've all been stars, good contributors, and uh, thanks so much, guys. And uh, yeah, let's say a big thanks to Ski in there. And uh, until next time, this Brilliant. is Ski's project, and the title of the track is on the actual video when it comes on. So check it out. I'll let it play to the end. All right, guys, take it easy. Hidamari. Bye. Slow motion, no, you need pedal,